iThoughts for iOS, as you might expect, works in a very similar way to the iThoughts X, which you find on your Mac. Mind mapping is the best thing, wherever or however you're doing it. It could be done with pencil and paper and crayons, but we're too good and geeky for that. So, same as ever, you get started with your central idea and you work away from that. Throw the connections in there to get all those ideas out of your brain into your mind map. Your level 1 nodes are what should be the chapters of your book or your top level headings of your article. The levels below that are going to be the subheadings and anything related to the subheadings that you want to cover in your writing. In some ways, making your mind map on your iPad is going to be more tactile doing it on the iPad than on your Mac. You don't have the same keyboard shortcuts that you have to quickly add notes, but you do have other ways which are just as quick. When you have selected a node and you want to add a child node quickly, just double tap anywhere on the canvas and a new child node will be created. In the top menu bar, you also have quick access to icons which will give you child nodes and symbol nodes with a single tap. So if I tap on this one here, that's going to give me a child node getting the ideas out there. And if I tap on this one here, that will give me a sibling node. And that will happen with a single tap on those icons at the top there. You can see when you've got one of your nodes selected because it's got that nice little border around it. If you tap and hold down on those icons, you get a few extra options. You can add a new parent, a new child, a new sibling before or a new sibling after. And you get the same group of options, whichever of those two icons you tap on. For instance, with adding a new parent, New parents will put the node in between the one that you've got selected and the one previous to that. I can have the sibling going before, so it's just on top of the one that's already there. Or I can add a sibling below, so it go after. If you are in the process of editing one of your nodes, what you can do is to do a quick tap on the space bar three times quickly. One, two, three. And that will add a child node. Or what I can do is to do a tap on the return key three times quickly and that will give me a sibling node. How about that for working quickly and efficiently with a mind map on iOS in iThoughts. And using this button here you can even add callouts to your mind map. If you want to make a connection between one of your nodes and another node and they're not directly connected then you can do that all you have to do is to tap on that icon there tap on the related one and you get an arrow going between the two and you can move that arrow around and have it exactly where you need it with this relationship you can choose which way the arrow is going you can have an arrow which is both ends or you can have two little dots at the end of it or you could have just a simple line like that so whichever way works the best for you and you can even change the color of it. So at the moment we've got a blue one there and I'm going to change that to a green one. When you start getting used to the application, you're probably better to keep it simple so that you can work fast and you can get into adding your parent nodes or specifying whether a sibling is before or after when you've got more used to it and you can stay in your creative zone without wondering what to do next. In any case, for in the zone creativity, if you keep it simple and you can get all of your ideas onto the mind map speedily, then you can do your rearranging later. That rearranging can be done within the mind map itself. As I was in the Mac version, you start with the node, which is top right, and it's in the purple color if you use the rainbow theme. And I know that's gonna be chapter one of my book or of my article. And the rest of the chapters go in a clockwise direction from that. The rearranging is quite easy to do. If I want to have the writing chapter as the first one of the book, what I've got to do is move this and put it up the top there. And now that is the one that's purple and the rest of them are going to be a different color following around from that. So writing now is my first chapter, Mac art is the second chapter, iPad art is the third chapter, and video art will be the chapter four. If you have created a large mind map, it can be sometimes a little bit overwhelming. And it's a bit difficult to see the level one notes that are going to be the chapters of your book. So what you can do is to tap on those minus icons to the right of your node and it will hide that branch. If you want to bring it back out again, just tap on the plus symbol and it will expand the branch outwards. So this is quite good if you want to concentrate on one of these areas so that you can just see that branch. Of course, it does make it a little bit easier as well when you are organizing your chapters. So for instance, if you want to have this one over here and have that as chapter one, you can see it all a bit happening a little bit easier when you're doing it this way. So that's how you can get some of your chapters organized in iThoughts for iOS. Another thing that you can do is to go into settings and switch the focus on selected. 
and when you've got that selected it means that just that will be selected and the rest will be dimmed out so for instance if I'm working on this one here with the video art I can just see what's in that there and concentrate on that without having the rest of it getting in my way sometimes what you want to do is to have something which is not connected to the main map and you can do this quite easily by tapping and holding on your iPad screen and a new node will pop up magically and it is a floating node and then once again you can go into this and you can do your adding of nodes to it and have a completely separate mind map from the main one it is possible to go into this section here and do some changing of your template styles and so on and you've got all sorts of possibilities there so you might have an organizational chart a default one more styles or whatever else whichever one floats your boat whichever one works best for you so as you can see it is possible to make some changes to this here i suggest that you just get one style that you like stick with it and then you can concentrate on your writing so this is dave allen having a quick look at what we can do with i thoughts on ios and as you can see it's a pretty darn good program and well worth using and it's great for when you are lying on the sofa and want to do a bit of writing or you could be out on the terrace even sitting in the sun and having some fun with your ipad and doing some work at the same time with your writing hope you're getting down and getting creative with your good and geeky writer's workflow